Well, hello, my friend. Welcome to day 150 of our Bible reading plan. We are reading through the Bible in one year together, and I'm so glad that you have joined us on the journey for today. I'm coming to you from Geelong in Victoria in Australia. I'm super excited this week to be preaching at Youth Alive in Victoria. I'm speaking at an undivided event to hundreds of teenagers believing God for salvations. And so I'm super excited and honored to be a part of that. Also coming up this Sunday, I'm speaking at my home church at Numa Church in Melbourne City. And uh, I'm going to be speaking on Pentecost Sunday, believing for people to encounter the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm super excited about that. Um, love for you to pray for me, pray for this ministry. Um, I'd really appreciate that. So day 150, super excited to be reading the Bible with you today and to be sharing some of the thoughts and reflections that I had. The first one came from John chapter 19 and verse 1 to 3 where it says, Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Here in this passage of scripture, we see that Jesus is being mocked. We see he's being flogged, he's going to be crucified, but specifically in these passages of scripture, we see Jesus being mocked. We know that he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, not just the King of the Jews, but the King of the world, the King of the universe. There is no King above him. He is the highest King, the highest authority. And so we see that they're mocking him, even though he is the king. It's like, oh, you think you're the king? And he is. Like, it's the truth. Like, it's not even, um, you know, like something that he wants to be. It's something that he is. So they're mocking him for something that he actually is, saying that he's not even the king. And so they're putting this purple robe on him. They're putting this crown of thorns, saying, all hail, king of the Jews. Oh, yeah, king of the Jews. Eh? You think you're the king of the Jews? They're just mocking him, mocking him, mocking him for something that is actually the truth, that he is actually the king of the Jews. And as I was thinking about this passage of scripture, I was just reminded that, hey, Jesus was not um, rattled by the mockery of man. He was not rattled when people mocked him for something that was actually true, that he is the king of the Jews. And he wasn't, wasn't unsettled, wasn't like, I am the king. Hey, yeah, you say that I'm not the king, but I actually am. And, and like calling down fire from heaven and showing them that he's the king of the world. No, he just wasn't rattled and he wasn't unsettled by that. He was um, so sure of what he had come to do. He knew that he was to die this death on the cross. And so he just fulfilled the plan and the purpose of God, even though these people were mocking him. And it just reminded me today that, hey, if people mocked Jesus as he was fulfilling the plan and the purpose of God, um, who are we to expect that we wouldn't get mocked somewhere along the way? And I think sometimes in our day and age, we can fear being mocked. Like that's probably the last thing that we want. We're like, oh, I hope people don't make fun of me. I hope people don't think I'm foolish. I hope people don't, you know, like humiliate me. But the reality of it is that Jesus went through mockery. And so maybe sometimes we are going to be mocked as well. But um, the key of this, this passage of scripture and the application for us today is that, hey, even in the face of being mocked, Jesus wasn't unsettled. He continued in the plan and the purpose of God. And so if we receive the mockery of man, we need to not be unsettled by that, not be rattled by that, but just keep going in fulfilling the plan and the purpose and the destiny that God has for us. Because at the end of the day, we know that this is the truth. We know that we're living out the truth that God has for us and as we fulfill the plan and the purpose of God for us we know that he'll settle everything in the end so I'd love to pray for us today my friend oh actually I've got one more thought <laughs> sorry I've got, I've got to cover our Old Testament um, passage so in 1 Samuel chapter 26 um, we see that David has a second opportunity a second opportunity to kill Saul and it's a second temptation to get what God had actually given to him and what was in his future and his destiny to become king by his own hands by his own means it was his opportunity to circumvent the problems that he was going through the process that he was going through you know it was a hard process it was a difficult process it was a horrible process he was on the run his father-in-law is trying to kill 
kill him. You know, he's living out in the wilderness. This is not an easy road. This is not an easy pathway to becoming king. This is the most difficult pathway that he could have had to have taken. But even in the midst of that, he didn't take the temptation to kill Saul when he had the opportunity to. So he didn't take the temptation to make everything easier for him to get his plan, his destiny and his future by his own means, by his own hands. No, he surrendered to the process of God. He surrendered to God. He wanted to do things the right way. And eventually we see the fruit of that. We see God honoring that faithfulness. And so I was just reminded today by this passage of scripture, of scripture that um, you know it, temptations to circumvent the process and the difficulties of life um, are not just a one-time only thing it's not just a temptation that happens once and then once you pass that test you're good you're never going to be tempted for the rest of your life no in each season the devil's going to bring a new temptation a new opportunity to try and tempt you to do things the wrong way but we see here that david had integrity integrity he deferred to the plan and the purpose of god the process of god he said no i'm not going to get it by my own hands even though that would be better for me even though it would be easier for me even though it would get me out of the horrible sort of situation that I'm in right now. I trust God. I put my faith in God. We see that this works out for David in the end. In just a few chapters, we're going to see everything unravel for Saul and David's going to become king. So I'd love to pray for us now today, my friend, um, just because I've got no more thoughts to share with you. My Old Testament, my New Testament thought have been shared. And so I would love to pray for us today. Love to pray that we would not be afraid of the mockery of man, that we would not be unsettled by the mockery of man or rattled by the mockery of man, but we would be resolute in fulfilling the plan and the purpose and the destiny that God has for us, just like Jesus was. And I would love to pray for us as well that uh, even in the midst of temptation, as temptation cycles come and go um, in each new season, I wanna pray that we would not uh, give in to that temptation to just circumvent the process and the difficulties that we're going through but we would trust God we would be, we would be faithful to his process his plan and we would know that he will bring about his purpose as we follow him in the right way so God I just thank you for my friend today I thank you Holy Spirit uh, that you're speaking to us I thank you that as we read through your word today God that you would just highlight, illuminate passages to us, Lord God. I pray that you would help us to live in the plans and the promises that you have for us today. I pray, Lord God, as we're looking at these two passages of scripture, where we're looking at Jesus not being unsettled or rattled by the mockery of man, but he was just resolute in fulfilling the plan and the purpose and the destiny that you had for him, Lord. I just pray that you would help us to be the same, that as people are mocking us, as people are trying to tear us down, trying to joke about, you know, what we're putting our faith and trust and belief in. God, I pray that we wouldn't be shaken. We wouldn't be rattled. We wouldn't be unsettled by their mockery, but God, we would be resolute in fulfilling the plan and the purpose and the destiny that you have for us, Lord. And I pray as well, God, just over um, this idea that comes out of 1 Samuel chapter 26, where we see that David had a second opportunity, a second opportunity to kill Saul, a second temptation to give into um, just circumventing the process and just grabbing hold of what he had already been given, um, just stepping into his future and his destiny just by his own means and by his own hands. Lord God, I thank you that we see in the example of David that he didn't take that into his own hands, but he faithfully followed your process. He faithfully trusted you, Lord God, and I thank you that everything worked out in the end, Lord. And I just pray today that if uh, temptation is coming to us to try and circumvent the process, to try and get those things that you have promised us um, sooner in our own ways, just to try and seize hold of it by ourselves, Lord God, I pray that we wouldn't give in to that temptation today. I pray that we would do things the right way, Lord God. I pray that we would be faithful to your promise, to your process. We would trust you and we would only be led by your instructions, Lord God, of how you want to do that in our lives. And so I just give you all the praise and all the glory today for what you're doing in us and through us. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, my friend. I will catch you tomorrow for day 151 of our Bible reading plan. Can't wait to see you then. Bye.